Despite the many false doctrines taught in most of our so-called Christian churches, to our knowledge, no Christian minister yet has had the audacity to say that anyone has a better understanding of Christianity than Jesus Christ. Today, Mr. Comparé's subject is the word that Christ has spoken. Mr. Comparé. Whenever dangerous times occur, the faint-hearted always argue that we should hold a summit meeting with Satan and find some compromise which will satisfy the forces of evil so that we can be in harmony with them without any controversy. They ignore the fact that in 6,000 years of recorded history, every compromise with evil has brought only more evil as its well-earned penalty. They try to dress up this compromise in garments of respectability by claiming that it is Christian, and for this purpose they sometimes lift a portion of some Bible verse out of context. More often they merely assert boldly and without authority that making peace is Christian even when it is the kind of peace they are getting in Hungary and Tibet. Who sets the standard of what is Christian? No one but Jesus Christ himself can do that. Let's see what he has said about it. In John 12, verses 47 and 48, he said, And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. When he says, I judge him not, that is not out of offended personal pride, but he says, the word that I have spoken, the eternal truth to which we must all measure up, that will judge him. And note that he says, the word that I have spoken, no one else can overrule him. Then, as also today, Orthodoxy had set up its official doctrines, much of it contradicting what Jesus Christ taught. So he quoted to them those terrible words from Isaiah. In Matthew 15, verse 9, and Mark 7, verse 7, he told them, In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. But many people sincerely believe the erroneous doctrines of orthodoxy, never bothering to look up to themselves what is right. Is it enough to be sincerely wrong, to blindly follow blind leaders without searching for the truth? No, for the Bible twice tells us there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's Proverbs 14, verse 12, and 16, verse 25. And how very true it is. We blindly followed evil and corrupt counselors into two world wars, bringing death to multitudes of our own sons, and then let these same men lead us into the trap which we are now told can result in the death of 80 million of our people in the first half hour of the next treacherous attack against us. Truth is always the same, whether we believe it or not. Is it enough to profess what you call Christianity? Or should you make sure of what Christianity really is? Again, let us turn to the words of Jesus Christ himself in Matthew 7, verses 21 to 24. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And see also Luke 13, Verses 25 to 27. You have seen signs on automobiles reading, Pray for peace. What peace can there be with evil? Remember, what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? In the very beginning of the Bible, Genesis 3, verse 15, God said to Satan, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. 
And Jesus Christ himself saith, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. That's Matthew 10, verse 37. This world order is still organized and ruled by Satan. How can we pray that Satan and his rule shall give us all the blessings of God's rule? No, Christ's word is clear. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Today, many of our churches seek brotherhood and unity with Jews who hate and deny and vilify our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Brotherhood and unity with Antichrist. The first and second epistles of John tell us, Little children, it is the last time, and ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Let no one tell you that these people worship the same God that we do. In John 15, verse 23, Jesus Christ himself said, He that hates me hates my Father also. These mistaken pseudo-Christians say, but we must have fellowship with them in order to convert them as God wants us to do. No, God does not want you to convert them. Jesus Christ made that very plain. And both Matthew 13, verses 10 to 15, and Mark 4, verses 11 and 12 record it. The Bible tells us that Jesus never taught his doctrines openly to them, but only concealed in parables which they could not understand. So the disciples once asked him why he did this, and he said, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven. That is to say, he took great pains to make sure they were not converted. The latest blasphemy of those who have corrupted many churches with false doctrine is their plan to publish a new version of the Bible, edited to remove therefrom anything which might offend those who hate Jesus Christ, including the gospel according to John. The tragic penalty of this is plain. In Luke 9, verse 26, Jesus Christ said, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. They're not going to edit John out of my Bible. When they shall say, Lord, in your name we preach brotherhood with those whom you identified as the children of Satan, remember what he answers, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. This is no time for the false doctrines of expediency. They lead only to the victory of evil and to our own destruction. Safety can never come from agreements with Khrushchev and Mao Zedong, from seeking the friendship of Congolese cannibals by degrading ourselves to their level. Again, Jesus Christ himself gives us the most solemn warning. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save him. Four times the Bible gives this warning. Mark 8, verse 35, 
Luke 9, verse 24, Luke 17, verse 33, and John 12, verse 25. If we had remembered this 30 years ago, we would have been spared the millions of Christians dead and wounded in two terrible world wars, the devastation of nearly all Europe, and the enslavement of half of it, and the horrors of the impending next war, which the stupidity and corruption of our own leaders made inevitable when they strengthened the power of evil for their own temporary and sinister political advantage. Oh, they thought it was clever, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let no man ever tell you that appeasement and compromise with evil is Christian, that fellowship and brotherhood with those who hate our Christ is Christian. There is only one standard of what is Christian, and that is what Jesus Christ himself taught us, his own exact words as they are recorded in the four Gospels. Everything else must be measured by this standard. As Jesus Christ said, the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Carefully restudy all his words, follow them, and then you need not fear any judgment.